indeed. Please, please. Hi there, I'm uh, Jonathan Coleman and welcome to Blind Taste. Now this is the show where we ask a keen cook to come on from home to make their favourite dish on television. Then we get a professional chef to come into the TV studios to see if they can cook it any better. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. But to add a bit of spice to our proceedings, we tell the chef absolutely nothing. They have no idea what they're going to cook. And of course our contestant who's back there has had plenty of time to practice at home on friends and neighbours and family, all that sort of stuff. But at the end of the show, three members of our fabulous studio audience will come on, join us on the show and they'll taste both those dishes and try and work out which one they think is best. So let's find out what today's dish is and of course let's find out who's going to be cooking it. Please welcome very warmly Mr Brian Bibby. Hello, Brian. Hi there, Brian. Now, welcome to the show. Thank you. Brian, how did you get into cooking and, and uh, how long ago? Well, I suppose I started when I was in my 20s and uh, I just sort of picked up the basics here and there and um, read a lot of books and that's it. So you're a book, you're a man who goes through those uh, traditional cooking books and goes, bit of that, bit of this, try a bit of that. Uh, I, um, I tend to follow recipes quite Methodically. Oh, right. This is having to do with the fact that you are a civil servant. Well, uh, <laughs> it might possibly have some connection with And it, yes. you've been on Mastermind. I, and I have been on Mastermind. So I'm going to have to be really careful what I say and what I do. I won't... Well, I don't think you'll be as scary as Magnus Magnusson used to be. Well, I've started, so I'll finish. You better. Um, <laughs> you'll have to say pass if you ask yeah, me anything. Pass, exactly, yeah. That's a great idea, actually. We'll stick to that. Um, your subject was Verdi. That was one of them, yes. And, and did, you, did you... How far did you get? I got to the final. Wow. But you didn't get to... Uh, I didn't get to hold the magnificent piece of glassware. A bit like... Um, well, a bit like this. A bit like that, only a, uh, quite a bit more ornate than that. In fact, this is almost a clue to what we're going to do. Tell us what we're going to cook, Brian. We're going to cook trifle. Trifle! Fantastic! Well, let's find out the man who'll be going up against you in the nicest possible way. Please welcome raconteur, bon vivant, cook, a man who's always on the TV, James Martin. <laughs> welcome, James. So, trifle, eh? I think you're a man who knows his way around a few trifles. I certainly trifle, am. Trifle, yeah. I'm yeah. shaped like a trifle. <laughs> <laughs> trifle? Yeah. Right, OK. Is there any particular type of trifle you're going to be doing? Is it the traditional...? It's... Uh, no, it's not quite no, He's not giving too much away. He's giving me any secrets. <laughs> <laughs> Does it have any of the fabulous fire water in it? There will be one or two alcoholic components in it. I'm a man who knows his way if you're at a few. Like, hey, <laughs> <laughs> the word component is exciting me already. Good to me. Let's get ready. Are you ready to hit your kitchen? I'm, yeah. You yeah, have the sure same I'm. sort of ingredients back there. I'll be here to, to help or hinder, as whichever comes first. So let's get into our kitchens and let's start cooking. Come on, Brian. <laughs> Now, for people watching at home, Brian and I will be uh, cooking a fine... Ooh, sponge fingers. Haven't seen those since Mum walked out on me. Anyway, um, <laughs> with the sponge fingers. Now, we're going to, uh, we're going to do your traditional trifle. Look at, look at James just stacking up the booze. Those, I think they're called components. <laughs> there may not be that many alcoholic components. He's just moving things around. He's just doing a little spring cleaning. You <laughs> So, what are you going to start with? Well, I'm going to put a base of um, sponge fingers and um, <coughs> with some red currant jelly and um, put the uh, alcoholic component, at least yes. one of the alcoholic components into that, and then um, make a custard and put it on. And in Ooh. case you were thinking, in case the word custard brought to mind a, an infamous sort of yellow powder, you know, the sort of thing yes, that it. everybody thinks of when custard, you can forget it because... Um, You're going for the easy custard. The, the, um, it will contain eggs and milk and sugar and nothing else. All right, fine. OK. Well, listen, Brian, I'll let you get started. I'll leave you alone. I'll go and pester James. All right. Okie dokes. I'm just going to get plastered, mate. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like. We'll make our own custard. So we'll put a measured amount of milk. Yeah. And a measured amount of cream. Shall I put the, the Devon custard away, then? Yeah, that's it. I'll have that Check on my cereal. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and then we need some eggs. Eggs? Chuck us some eggs, yeah. No problems. Look at that. Bang on a pint. I've been laying these earlier. <laughs> Use a pint of that, and then we want, uh How many eggs do you want? Eggs. Ten eggs. Yours. Ten eggs? Yeah. 
yolks, not eggs. One, two. Yeah. Mind a little bit of muck. Oh, muck. sorry, that was one that I uh, yeah. haven't quite finished with. Yes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then we'll do, eight. We'll do a very, very thick um, custard to go with that. For a very, very thick presenter. OK, <laughs> so we'll do that. That's one. Two. Here you are, Professor. Three. It's all going on over here. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Four. Oh, yeah. Five. I'll put the wine away. Six. Seven. Eight. Measure everything. Nine. <laughs> That'll do. Right, okay, ten. Okay, then what we'll do is. There you go. What are we going to do with it? Is that the bit you're using? <laughs> <laughs> Get rid of that. Get rid of that. That'll okay. be all right. And then we'll make um, I reckon, because what goes, I think goes fantastically well in a trifle is orange. Yeah. So bit we'll of a do, zest. Bit of a zest. We'll do an orange and Grand Marnier. Oh, Grand Marnier. Custard. That's all what right. we'll do. And then we'll just we'll just use the zest to go in our custard. Right. So what I want to do, use a lot of egg, egg yolks for this, because we want it to thicken up really well. So I'm going to make it quite orangey, and then use the segments to go into our base of our trifle. When was the first time you had trifle, James? Was it in the family home with it your was, mum? Yeah, it was a long time ago. <laughs> but um... Christmas. See? And she used to put. That was the first time I think I had alcohol officially, <laughs> apart from the time I stole my dad's beer when I was five. <laughs> but it's fantastic dessert, and it's you know it's again one of those things that um, is coming back. It's revival food, you know. Yeah. A lot of chefs like. Prawn cocktail and that sort of thing. What is that little green bit there? Um, it's not me. Don't look at me like that. And then we'll whisk this Yeah, it up. is a revival food, though. I guess it's one of those kind of evergreens. Yeah, it's, it's fantastic food. But with making our proper custard, what you need to do is bring the milk and the cream to the boil. Yeah. Slowly add it to the eggs. Return it back to there and coat the back of a spoon so just so it starts to thicken. Strain it all off and then cool it down straight away. All right, but well, I'll go, we, yeah, I'll well, go and check on Brian. Oh, this looks good, Brian. Is that your custard mixture? That's the custard mixture, yes. Which um, I've gently thickened over um, a low flame, hoping it won't um, curdle. Right, and that's ice in there just to sort of that's, cool that's it That's just, that's um, ice to cool it down. I'll, um, and then that, that goes over the, um, the trifle sponges and the um, red currant jelly. Yeah, and then um, you're going to chop up some fruit and things like that? And I'll be chopping up some fruit and making a syllabub to finish the whole okay. thing Okay, well listen, you chop up the fruit, I'm going to go make a cup of tea. James is showing off as usual, he's got a few surprises up his sleeves. We'll take a break and we'll be back in a few moments with some more Blind Taste. See you in a minute. <laughs>
it's Jonathan Coleman here. Welcome back to Blind Taste. I'm here with Brian. James Martin's over there clattering and banging around. The smell of, uh, of nuts and custard and all sorts of things are on the air. Uh, Brian, you're about to uh, pour your custard over your, um, your sponge and your black currant jelly. That's been cooling off with the ice. So, very, very... Oh, that looks nice. Beautiful. Got the cut up um, kiwi fruit and uh, is that mango in there? Kiwi fruit, mango, yeah. orange, um, some, there's going to be some raspberries, toasted nuts, and some toasted hazelnuts, nuts, which I'm going to pound. All right, I'll get out of the way, it sounds too dangerous. It's, they're going to fly all over all right, the place. Brian, I'll, I'll leave you to go and see what James is up to. James, how's it going? Hey, mate, we're not doing too bad actually. We're get, we've, um, we've got in here mm -hmm. a little bit of caramel. Right. With, um, a little bit of orange juice in there. Oh, I see. Sorry, mate. Right. Okay. And we're going to make. Um, Are you going to do one of your um, twisty foldy? Do you want me to do one of his twisty foldy? Twist, do you want to see one of his twisty foldy roly polies? <laughs> very, very. I've seen him do this on other programs. Yeah, okay. And I think you do uh, birthdays, 21st and permits. Yeah, now. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but this one in here is just caramel. What I'm just about to do, I just added a little bit of orange juice mm -hmm. and then a good splash of. Um, Bit of that, yeah. Grand Marnier. Yeah, Grand Marnier. Reduce it down, and we're going to create like um, it wants to go down to like a golden syrup texture, and that's going to drizzle on top of our cream. Okay, and what fruits have you got here? Got the nice strawberries. We've got in here a mixture of um, oranges and strawberries. That's fresh it. Oranges. I've made a fresh raspberry sauce, which is just raspberries, a little bit of caster sugar, and some water. Yeah. Got a custard, nicely thickened. That's there. your custard, which you also put a bit of Grand, grand Marnier in that. My nuts are roasted. Yeah. And uh, I'll show you how to do that. Thank you, Dochi. Basically what you do is get a clean pan, clean pan, clean sugar, measured amount. Measured amount. And then leave it. Right. Right? If you leave it two to three minutes, it'll start to caramelise on a really high heat and then just leave it. You mustn't, whatever you do, add any spoons or anything like that and stir it. Right. Because it'll recrystallise, it. yeah. So you just leave it and it will actually be ready to do the old sponge sugar. And that's that ordinary caster sugar. Ordinary caster sugar. Okay. I'll go right, over and wicked. see what Brian's up to. Brian's crushing his nuts. I'm crushing my nuts. I haven't I've heard any screaming. No. Um, I've stuck the um, trifle ensemble into the freezer just to sort of get it nice and um, cool down. Yeah, yeah. And I'm just preparing the fruit, the nuts. There's also going to be some um, amaretti biscuits. Oh, yes, I've got the amaretti biscuits. Yeah, They're down here. Them. Oh, yes, so they are. Amaretti biscuits. So those, those, now, those are if you were doing something crunch. like this for... Uh, a, a lunch dessert or a, an evening dessert, would you cook it like a lot of time before? Would you leave it in the fridge overnight? Ideally, you ought to give it enough time in the fridge um, before you serve it to get everything nicely sort of intermingling with yeah, each other. Flavors and but it. on the other hand, it shouldn't be too long because otherwise it can sort of, all the sponge fingers will completely absorb the liquid and they'll go limp and the amaretti biscuits will um, uh, will also sort of semi-dissolve. So Nothing wrong with a limp biscuit these absolutely days. Absolutely not. <laughs> okay, so you've got your nuts coming together nicely. I'd better go and see what James is doing. Yeah. There's a bit of fuss going on. A bit of kerfuffle. Yeah, what I'm going to do is I've uh, changed my mind on this point. But I'm oh, gonna... I see. Yeah, I'm going to... Because I'm not into that <laughs> whack it in the fridge for a fortnight business. <laughs> Sorry, you're right there. No, I was just trying to see what... I just throw it all in. So I'm just going to make a... Bit of whiskey? Bit of that, bit of that. Bit of whiskey, bit of brandy, bit of rum, bit of Grand Marnier to make a, um, our own little sort of syrup to go onto our sponge. You're Oops. the first person that's ever used the rum on the show so far, right. so I think that deserves a small <laughs> round of applause. Yeah. A bit more, then. A bit more then. It's fantastic. But what we'll do is we'll, um, you could put sort of jam on there, but yeah. what we will do is we'll put this very potent strong syrup. Yeah. Very potent syrup. So we'll just Don't that. try this at home, kids. <laughs> And if you're a babysitter and you're watching the show now, don't try this at home, kids. <laughs> <laughs> but it's fantastic. It's very, very strong. But it's the sugar in there will obviously sweeten it down a little bit. And then we'll reduce this down and create a syrup to go over the top of us, our little bit of trifle. But what I'm going to do, instead of this thing, yeah. it looks like sort of a... Looks like one of my mum's kind of flower like bowls. a big specimen jar, doesn't yeah, it? Yes, so I will fill anyway. that for you later. So, what I'm going to do, we're actually going to just... I'm going to do it in one of these little rings. So, from that to that little thing. That's not too bad. But, um, these are fab. If you just layer this up, 
and then we'll layer it all up with the fruit and the sponge and the custard on the top, a little bit of cream, make it look pretty, and then use this sauce around the edge and make it look really well, it's nice. Like, it's almost like a, a, a dessert version of what a lot of restaurants do when they do those kind of layer Seems upon sort layer. Of thing, yeah. 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 It's like that sort of uh, something under aspic almost, like they do as a starter, that kind of... Uh, yeah, and a, it's just a layer of meat, a layer of herbs. Just layer it all up. Yeah. Each time you do it, press it down so it's nice and flat. Yeah. And you get all the flavours compact into each other. And because we're going to put our cream on the top, which I put in a piping bag that's in the, uh, in the fridge. You love the old piping bags. Yeah. And then just grab another one. Yeah. See? And layer this all up again. Wow. Like that. Make sure it's nice and pressed down. And then hopefully when we lift off our ring, we'll end up with a nice layer of this sponge and fruit. Just and a if, different way of making a truffle. And if you have one of those, you won't be uh, driving home or operating heavy equipment. Definitely not, definitely not. Leave but the forklift at home, <laughs> kids. <laughs> but it's just a nice way of doing, especially if you've got a dinner party, yep. you know, if you want to create something slightly different, it's just a nice way of placing things up, really. Now, what should happen is we end up with a perfect sort of tower. See? Fantastic, uh, look at that. Nice little treasure. <laughs> What we do with it now, I've got no idea, but there we go. <laughs> well, you've got, you've, got, you've got some fridge time, maybe. Yeah, yeah. I think we'll, we're, yeah, we're just going to finish that off. We'll put a little bit of custard probably around the edge and a little bit on top, pipe up some cream, a little bit of nuts, and then I'll show you how to do the little sugar twirl in a minute. OK, yeah. fine. All right, I'll go and see Brian. Oh, Brian, this oh. must be the famous syllabub. Oh, this is the famous syllabub. This is the syllabub, ladies and gentlemen. A small round of applause for the syllabub. You've got some booze in there, you've got some uh, sherry, some uh, beautiful, uh, what is this, brandy? Brandy, that's right. And uh, a syllabub, what is it, an old Elizabethan word? It's an old Elizabethan word. <laughs> See? And, um... Which means, give your scylla to the bub. <laughs> this, is blind, this is blind taste, not blind date. <laughs> Bring scylla over to the bub, and she goes, surprise, surprise! It's a young syllabub. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Now, what are we going to do with the sugar? Is there... uh, the sugar can can be, in fact, everything can be um, moved away now, apart from the final piece de resistance. Yeah. Which is um, the grated nutmeg on top. Marvelous. All right. Well, I'll leave you to do that. I'll just go over and see James. I think he's got another little trick up his sleeve. Right then, mate. We Hello, haven't got James. no scylla or no bud over no, here. No scylla, got, Bob. We've got a bit of whipped cream. Yeah. What I'm going to do is. Um, just pipe our whipped cream on top of our trifle. Lovely, yeah. lovely. And then what we'll do is we'll take a little bit of this syrup that we made with all the uh, the alcohol and the sugar, yeah. which is this sort of quite thick... Oh, that looks like caramel so sauce. Caramely. Yeah. It's more or less like that. And then a few bits of toasted nuts on the top of there, yeah. like that. And if we lift this on top of our custard. Oh, that looks lovely. There you go. So we put that like that. And then we've got a little bit of sauce, which we can place around the edge, which is this little bit of... Now, some chefs call this coolie, but it's a little bit of sauce to go around the edge. Like that. Make it look pretty. There we go. Bring it over there. And then, put a few little bits of strawberries, which we'll place on. And my sugar, yep. I'm just heating up just slightly. That's just going to go... Like that. And then our sugar, which we just heat up, we will do a little bit of sponge sugar. Oh, sponge right. sugar. We like the old sponge sugar. Okay. Now, the trick is with this, and you get your sugar ready, and as it's cooling down even more, you then twist this round your wooden rolling pin. Now, these, these are good rolling pins, but you know you, you can get the ones that your granny used to have with the old varnish on Oh, yeah, yeah. That stuff. Not the stuff that's made out of MDF nowadays, but it'll stick. But this is what you want. Nice rolling pin, and then you spin this round the rolling pin like that. Lift this off, and then if you watch carefully or look carefully, we should end up with a little curl on the top of our little dessert. Oh. Like that. There you go.
And that's my trifle done. That is beautiful. And the thing is, a lot of people don't know this, but I saw this on tomorrow as well once. If you get the end of that spun sugar and the other end and put it on a battery, you can light the whole of Birmingham. That's the one. <laughs> that's it, old fashioned. That's it. All right. <laughs> Come over, James. Let's see how right. Brian's going. Brian, look at this. There's your more. 400. Your traditional <laughs> trifle. A friend of the crew. They're very, very good. Let's hear it for James and Brian, ladies and gentlemen. Well done, mate. Well done, mate. Very good. Now, let's see what the judges think. Come over, follow me over to see the judges, and we'll see what they think. Come on. OK. A fine job by both of you. Always a wonderful, wonderful thing. The big dessert. Lovely, lovely, lovely. And we've got our, uh, our judges out of the studio audience. First of all, we have Claire. How are you, Claire? I'm very fine, thank you. Are you, you. looking forward to having some nice uh, succulent dessert? Yes, I'm very curious. Bernard? Yeah. Are you looking forward to having a taste? Very much so. And uh, Susie, you looking forward to tasting? Yes. All right, well, without further ado, let's meet the fabulous Joe, who's about to cut up... Oh, you've done it already. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay, sir. Joe, our food stylist to the stars. <laughs> I don't know how you keep so trim and terrific with the, all that food that we get to eat. It's just because I eat it before it gets exactly. to you. Exactly. Nobody uh, gets a chance. Now, we've got our blindfolds. I like you to put, all, put your blindfolds on so you can't see which plate that uh, the beautiful Joe is going to uh, pop each one in. OK, blindfolds on. Yep, it's on. OK. All right, well, um, give me one to hold and you can do it. If you could hold James's. Thank you. OK, fine. So, Brian, I think my career may have come to the end as being a food stylist. Oh, it's not the easiest of desserts to don't do. Be such no excuses, it can't. Don't <laughs> be such a syllabub. Yeah. <laughs> Today's word, syllabub. Look it up on the Taste website. OK, there you are. Gradually sloshing them down. I hope driving. Uh, or operating heavy equipment. <laughs> Marvellous. Final dollop there for Claire. OK. Thank you. Just have a little bit of that. OK. Just a little <laughs> okay. bit. Mm -hmm. I bet you always used to eat them mixture before you were making cakes when you were younger. No, you? well, Just I used to help Just make sure my out. sugar curls. Oh, absolutely. Oh, that, that disappeared. I ate your curl about <laughs> <It's gone>. 45 <laughs> seconds yeah, ago. Right, yeah. OK. Just a few more <laughs> plates to do. And then Joe will be back down at the off licence. <laughs> <laughs> Top up on the drinks cabinet with all the alcohol that's just been put in these. <laughs> Thank you very much. OK, blindfolds off, folks. Oh, right. And I'm going to ask the studio audience once again which one they want you to taste first. Ladies and gentlemen, what would you like them to taste first? Blue or yellow? Yellow. 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 Any yellow to you too. <laughs> OK, get, pick up your um, dessert spoon or your fork, however you want to do it. Try the yellow. got your homemade custard there's some there's sponge in there all sorts of uh, alcoholic beverages okay uh, now try your blue if you want to cleanse your palate first with the water it's there and get straight get stuck right in there to our blue plate special Susie's so getting ooh. all right mm -hmm. forks and and uh, spoons down. I'd like you to vote by pushing the plate forward of the yummy dessert that you like the most. So vote now by pushing the plate forward. Mm -hmm. Brian's waiting to see how everyone else votes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, boys, come on. Okay, so we've got one, two, three yellows and two blues. We'll come over here. Thank you very much, judges. Let's see who's uh, who's is who's. That was a very, very, it was like a hung note then. <laughs> All right, well, listen, I think you both did a fantastic job. Both obviously quite different sort of ways of doing it. But let's have a look, Brian, and see what yours was. Yours was the blue. So the yellow has won on this occasion. So congratulations <laughs> to James Martin. Cheers. Cheers. And uh, congratulations Cheers. to Brian. Thank you very much for coming on. Thank James you. has got a nice little bottle of bubbles yep. for you. There you go. Wonderful. Little bubbles to celebrate the uh, silly bubbles. Uh, thank you very much, both of you. Thank you very much, audience. Thank you very much, folks at home. Thank you, uh, our fabulous jury. We're going to finish all the rest of these desserts now, and we'll see you next time for some more blind taste. Until then, bye bye. <laughs>